Okay, let's remove the background in GIMP for processing with V4. Um, first thing you, you are going to want to do is grab your fuzzy select tool here. This is what's going to make your selection. And right here are my settings for the tool, for the fuzzy select tool. That's what they are currently. They work pretty decent. So what you do is uh, you left click inside your background here and you can move your selection inwards or you can refine it out to the edge around the subject like so. And then you're going to hold shift and do the same thing over here. Just click in the background area. Now we are going to make sure the background color is 100% white or just type six F's right here. And now we will fill it with the background color, which is 100% white. And now we are going to copy our selection. That's the main part. It really doesn't matter what color you choose for the background. Just make sure that you fill it with something and copy the selection. So now we are going to copy what we just selected. And we're going to come over here to our layers panel. And we are going to create a new layer group. And then press Control v to paste our uh, newly copied selection. Okay, there it is there. Now we're going to need to deselect this by going to Select, None. And now we want to process the actual photo, so we are going to highlight the photo layer and run the plugin. Now this is the, the tile option, so it's going to come out inverted as a negative for you. That's how it's going to have to be if you're going to be painting glass black or a tile white. Basically, if the material turns white from the laser going through black paint, it's going to need to be inverted like so. Um, for demonstration purposes, if you guys want to see, you know, what this should look like on a tile or glass when it's done, uh, obviously it's a negative. So I'm going to invert it just for demonstration purposes. You should leave it like this when you're when it's done and burn it as is. But this is about how it's going to look on a tile or glass. Now the next step before sending it over to your uh, laser software is you're going to flatten the image. You're going to flatten your layers, make it one one solid photo. And now we can go to export as to save it. And then you're going to import it into RDWorks or Lightburn. And uh, once you're in RDWorks or Lightburn, the most important thing inside Lightburn is this right here, pass-through mode. Activate pass-through mode every time. And over in RD Works, when you're in your settings window, when you give it some speed and power, uh, it's going to look a little different than this, but you're looking for um, output direct. And you're going to check that checkbox for output direct. And that's essentially the same as pass-through mode. And what this mode does here is it tells Lightburn, do not touch the photo. So it's going to be as is how it came out of GIMP. Otherwise, if you don't use pass-through, watch this here. See how this is grayed out? If you don't, then it's going to apply more effects to the photo, and that's going to get destructive and be over-edited at that point. So make sure you use pass-through mode. And after that, you know, your, your speed and your power, that's to be decided, actually. You know, so just pretty much uh, start with a, a decent speed, probably like 20 millimeters per second. And I know my low end of my power band on my 100 watt machine is about, you know, 12.2% or so it starts firing. So... This is a low-end power setting here. Um, the best thing to do is to 
um, let's just say I know my machine starts firing at 12%. So I'm just going to put 10 here. I'm going to send it to the machine. No, this isn't going to do anything that I want. So what I'm going to do when it's running on the machine is I'm going to press my... Now keep your minimum and maximum power the same all the time for photos. Um, on your machine, to raise the power upwards, you're going to press your minimum power button on your controller there, on your machine. Excuse me, I kind of have a cold or something. But uh, um, press minimum power on your machine, and then you can use the arrow keys to increase your power upwards. Okay. And when you press enter... Now, if I raise this up to 12, watch what happens to my maximum power. See, it matches it to 12. Now, if I were to press the maximum power button as the machine's running and change this to 13, my minimum won't update on the controller. So it's going to separate the minimum from max. So to raise the power, you're going to press the minimum power button. And to lower the power you're going to press the maximum power button. See, so uh, right now it's 13%. So if I raise this to 12, it's going to even out. If I lower this to 11, minimum power changes to 11 also. Now, you're going to be doing, I'm just demonstrating this right here in the software. I'm talking about doing this on the machine. So you're going to keep bumping your power up. So let's say you start at 10. Let's say I know... 13, let's just say 13.9% power is what perfect is in the in the sea of uh, settings there. But we started at 10. So as it's running, you're going to probably bump it up right away just 1% because it's really not doing anything. And then nothing's going to happen. So then I'm going to bump it up another 1% to 12%. And then it's going to start firing and you're going to start seeing something and then i'm going to raise it to a half a percent this time 12 12 and a half percent and then it's going to start you know burning more paint away and the photo is going to become more of a photo so essentially you're going to keep raising your power as it's running working only in one direction towards your perfect power because then you're not going to surpass where the perfect power was by guessing. Let's say you started at 10% and you jump up to 20%, but perfect is 13.9%. So now you're, you know, way, way far ahead on, you missed perfect long ago because you guessed and you went past perfect. So bump up your power in micro increments. And as it starts getting more and more realistic, you can adjust your power by one tenth of a percent. So you you could go, uh, you know, 10.9%. You might think I'm crazy about this one tenth of a percent. When you're right in the edge of perfection, because there's only one spot on result with printing or burning a photo. So, you know, this, this one tenth makes all the difference when you're right in that line of perfection. And there will be a shade difference in your photo once everything's in order with your other settings and your machine calibration. So once you're writing the line of perfection and clarity on your photo, this little change here can mean a, the whole world to bring it to spot on. So this uh, one-tenth of a percent is uh, pretty much necessary if you're going for perfect. You know, it's going to, if you get close to perfect, it's it's going to, look excellent don't get me wrong but you know if you're like me and always want to try to do the best you can do then you know this is what you should do because you're you're gonna find where perfect is and then after you find the perfect power now you can start increasing your speed because now you have the perfect power for this speed so now if we want to increase the speed i would go to like 250 millimeters per second as the machine's running now and then eventually it's the photo is going to start getting a little bit darker a little bit darker a little bit darker as you get faster and faster so now you're going to have to bump your power up okay 
so you're going to have to bump your power up to like 11.1% just to bring back a balance between speed and power. Since you're increasing the speed, you're just, you know, adding a little more weight to the scale to balance it out again as you increase the speed. So I can get up to about 450 millimeters per second or so before it starts uh, missing detail and getting a little blurry on me, but the, the slower you go, the more accurate it's going to be with a glass tube laser. So that was just a quick little rundown on, you know, how to remove the background and find your best settings.